Hey guys, this is a good topic because everyone's always talking about gluten. So this video answers the question, should you be worried about gluten? This comes from an article that was just published on Dr. Furman's website. So I'm going to read to you parts of this article so that you can know the answer to the question. Okay, here we go. I'm also gonna to link to this article down below in the description so you can check it out to get the rest of the information. Should everyone be concerned about consuming gluten? Gluten-free, like fat-free and low-carb, is a dietary fad that claims to promote weight loss and en enhance health. But are there real health benefits to going gluten-free? So first of all, what is gluten? Gluten is a generic name for the primary protein found in wheat and grains related to wheat. It comprises about 70% of the total protein content in wheat. Gluten is an important component in grains ground into flour and used for baking because it provides elasticity and chewiness in breads and helps dough to rise by trapping the carbon dioxide that's produced by yeast. Gluten is found in many grains like farro, frica, bulgur, spelt, camet, barley, rye, and triticale. Since processed foods like pasta, breads, baked goods, and meat substitutes are typically made with wheat, gluten is ubiquitous in the American diet. According to the USDA, about 17% 17, 17% of calories in the American diet come from wheat flour, a large proportion of the diet from a single food. When is it necessary to go gluten-free? For years, wheat has been blamed in diet books as a cause of obesity, dementia, and poor health, but there are only three health conditions that are gluten-related, wheat allergy, the autoimmune condition known as celiac disease, and non-celiac gluten sensitivity. In celiac disease, eating gluten provokes the body to launch an autoimmune attack on the small intestine. This can lead to chronic inflammation and serious health problems throughout the body, not just in the digestive tract. Estimates are about 1% uh, of the population that has celiac disease. Another 1% of the population has a wheat allergy. People with non-celiac gluten sensitivity do not have the intestinal damage related to celiac disease and they don't have an allergy to wheat or gluten. A diagnosis of gluten sensitivity is usually made after a celiac disease is ruled out and removing gluten from the diet re removes the symptoms. Individuals with gluten sensitivity can have joint pain, muscle aches, and fatigue in addition, in addition to digestive sy symptoms. The disease is not really well understood and the symptoms are not clearly defined. Overall, it's estimated that three to 6% of the population are sensitive to gluten. This includes irritable bowel syndrome and some autoimmune diseases that are sometimes aggravated by gluten consumption. Does it have negative effects on our health? Well, it's been called the main cause of the nation's obesity epidemic in diet books, and losing weight seems to be a motivator in the trend of those seeking a gluten-free diet. Yet there have been no studies published that show removing gluten from the diet re results in weight loss. Furthermore, there's also no evidence that intact wheat berries, which are unground wheat kernels, which contain gluten, yet are a whole unprocessed food, has any ne negative effect on health in people who do not have a medical need to avoid gluten. What happens often in books on online is that the negatives of high glycemic refined carbohydrates, like white flour products and very finely ground whole wheat flour are attributed to gluten or wheat. It's the refining process and the increased glycemic effect upon eating refined flour products that's unhealthful, and not the type of grain or even gluten in particular that contributes to the promotion of chronic disease. What usually happens then is other refined carbohydrates without the gluten, such as white rice flour, is used instead, and then that's not an improvement. A gluten-free diet can be just as high in calories and low in nutritional value as a standard American diet. Refined white flour in the form of gluten-free pasta, cookies, and bread will not help you lose weight. These products are just as harmful as refined wheat flour. However, if you replace gluten-containing pastas and baked goods in your diet with vegetables, beans, fruits, nuts, and seeds, which happen to all be gluten-free, you would most likely lose weight and be healthier because these foods are naturally low glycemic and high in fiber and nutrients. Also, this is really interesting, and I love that they put this in here. Um, what role should grains have in our diet? It's clear that not everyone needs a gluten-free diet unless there's some medical need to restrict or avoid gluten. Of course, eating an abundance of refined flour products does promote weight gain and poor health, regardless of whether they're made with wheat or other grains. Beans and other legumes are the healthiest carbohydrate-rich foods. However, intact whole grains can be a helpful part of a health-supporting diet too. This is the part I like. Although there's no scientific evidence that people without gluten sensitive or celiac disease would be harmed by gluten, there's also no nutritional requirement for grains either. So it's not even a part of your diet that's necessary. It's interest, it's, um, it's more important to get higher nutrient things per calorie. So the vegetables, the nuts, the seeds, the beans, things like that. So the bottom line, for most people, gluten is not a problem. Within the context of an optimal nutritarian diet, eating healthful gluten-containing foods such as wheat berries cooked in water or some coarsely ground or sprouted whole wheat bread will not negatively affect your health. Many advocates of gluten-free eating programs have supplied scientific references showing the link between wheat 
disease by using studies on white flour, flour products, incorrectly blaming the health problems resulting from white flour products on the gluten they contain, and that's not scientifically accurate. A nutritarian diet relies heavily on beans as a starch source and includes a variety of starchy vegetables like peas, root vegetables, and squash. When grains are used, they are best um, intact whole grains cooked in water. Water cooked whole grains are healthier than whole wheat breads or other flour products because more nutrients are retained. The glycemic load is favorable and water cooking does not form toxic compounds that are generated when food is browned. And of course, always remember the foods Dr. Furman wants us to eat regularly for optimal health, which is G-bombs, greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, nuts, and seeds. So there you have it, the skinny on gluten. Don't worry about it too much. Um, I personally don't eat a ton of gluten, but that's because I just don't eat a ton of grains. I don't eat a lot of those kinds of foods. I try to crowd out those foods with the higher nutrient things. So that's a little information for you there. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I really appreciate you being here. Please comment, like, and subscribe to show me that you appreciate these videos. That's the way I love to hear from you. And also, if you're interested in oatmeal, I have a really, really great nine-day oatmeal breakfast boot camp that you can check out as well with 11 amazing recipes that will get you into shape for understanding the best ways to make oatmeal. There's a link for everything down below. Thanks again for watching. See you later. Bye.